so yesterday, more hostages released. That's good news. Yeah, two uh, mothers and nine children, the youngest being three years old. Uh, including three with ties to America, but not three from the believed eight to ten that we're hearing from the Biden administration, Americans uh, who are being held hostage. Uh, and this, of course, uh, in exchange for Israel releasing 33 uh 33 Palestinians they have in custody. So this three to one that holds up. So the ceasefire extends for two more days. That was announced yesterday. More hostages ostensibly will be released today in keeping with the extension of the ceasefire. Uh, pressure on the West. <laughs> pressure on the West. This is a, an interesting um, riff from a BBC reporter about uh, the mounting pressure on the West, which really is coming from the Western press, coming from Western academics, uh, coming perhaps from some politicians in the Democrat Socialist Party. But I I don't feel any pressure. And I don't think most uh, politicians, mainly Republicans, because that's who we're talking about, who uh, otherwise support Israel and want to see Israel eradicate Hamas and, frankly, other terrorist organizations that are sponsored by Iran. I don't think they feel pressure, but this gives you a sense. This is the pressure that the Western media is trying to generate on Western governments. Here's James Lands. James Landale, BBC. Looking at Lord Cameron and they're looking at the Americans, they're saying there's a double standard here. You preach international law and yet you ignore uh, the criticisms that are made against Israel. You are saying civilians need to be defended in Ukraine, but they seem to be less well defended uh, in Gaza. Those arguments are being made against the West now, and I think the West now is beginning to feel that, and that's why some of the language is beginning to be cranked up by people like Lord Cameron and other politicians who are visiting, saying to the Israelis, look, we're reaching a point where perhaps something needs to shift, but we're not there yet. Mm -hmm. Um, Civilians in Ukraine versus civilians in Gaza. There's a big difference, isn't there? First of all, uh, so, so there should be no pressure felt by idiotic arguments and false comparisons. Although I'm sure there is pressure being felt by the Biden administration, thus their middling rhetoric on some of these topics. Um, Civilians in Ukraine, yes, because they're being uh, attacked by the Russians, uh, bombed by the Russians. So that's a problem. Uh, The difference is the Ukrainians are not hiding behind civilians, using them as human shields. They're not operating from uh, a tunnel complexes underneath hospitals, right, Mr. Landale? The uh, false equivalences, they're manifest. It's, he sounds like he's trying out to be the president of Ivy League school. Uh, for more on this, we're pleased to be joined by Francis Rooney, a former congressman from southwest Florida, former U.S. ambassador to the Holy See, author of the book The Global Vacation. Uh, Francis Rooney, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Let's have me on. Yeah, the book is the Global Vatican. I'm sorry. What did I say? Vacation. I'm 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 thinking of where I want to be on vacation. Sorry. The Global Vatican, of course, is the book. <laughs> that would make sense from the former ambassador different. to the Vatican, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. uh, so uh, your perspective on the uh, the deal that was struck, uh, on be on, in, at least in part on behalf of the United States, but with respect to the uh, prisoners for hostages. And the ceasefire, is this uh, in the best interest of America? I don't think I've ever seen one of these hostage transfer deals work out long term. It just everybody keeps up in the ante. And the fact that we traded uh, captured people from Hamas for prisoners, leaders of the Hamas insurrection in Israel is a little bit abhorrent to me. I think the words you used, false equivalency, were very good. This BBC guy's off his rocker. You know, the Ukraine was invaded. So what happens to their civilians is totally different than what happens to Gaza civilians who've been putting up with these governments for years, been abused by their governments, allowing their governments to steal, and now they invaded Israel. 
So the, the innocents we should be worried about, like the Ukrainians, are the Israeli innocents who were attacked. And so um, what would your recommendation be in terms of the posture that this administ- the, the, the American president, Biden, and this administration take vis-a-vis the deals that Israel and, I guess, Qatar are negotiating? If it were me, I would say that uh, we're not going to exchange uh, uh, terrorist leaders for civilian people. And I would say that the United States refer- remains firmly committed to backing Israel in its effort to eliminate Hamas and bring some kind of stability uh, to that area which for the people of Israel, quite frankly, who are attacked by Hamas. Well, what do you think about President Biden? I mean, I, I feel like he's going back on his promise a little bit. Did you know about that secret meeting that he held at the White House with White House staffers and a group of Muslims Americans? Muslim Americans, excuse me. And he apologized for excessive skepticism over the number of Palestinian deaths released by Hamas. And he said to the group, quote, I'm sorry, I'm disappointed in myself. You know, this guy is so weak, so confused. And he talks out of both sides of his mouth. Whoever's in the room last gets told what they want to hear. You know, all this trash talk about uh, the innocent Palestinians and, and all that. This is a country run by an enemy of Israel and everybody else, quite frankly, but if we can eliminate it, it's better. And I'm sorry some innocent people are going to die, but they've got a really bad geography where they're living, and they've had a long time to deal with their own internal problems in in Gaza, and they haven't done it. Yeah, well, and and then there's um, a lot of question about just how many of the residents of Gaza see Hamas as an internal problem, which is a whole other uh, topic that, that uh, that's right that's yeah. the whole point that is yeah. their problem to deal with remember that Ehud Barak at the end of Clinton's t- uh, time offered um, um, Arafat everything Arafat asked for and Arafat stood up and walked out of the room because he didn't want peace he needs a pinata to hold up above the people so he can you know steal more money and and uh, and, and, and run the Palestinian Authority they're still no better than that right now under Hamas. No, clearly. Uh, Chris Murphy, he's a Democrat socialist from uh, Connecticut, as you know, senator, saying uh, of aid, USA to Israel, that uh, it needs to be conditioned to compliance with U.S. law and international law. He said, I think you can defeat Hamas without this level of civilian casualty, which he calls unacceptable. Well, he, he wants his cake and eat it, too. He wants to take out Hamas without any collateral damage. I don't think that's possible, the way the geography is configured over there. And so uh, should Republicans continue the push that started in the House to uh, provide aid for Israel in a standalone fashion rather than this sort of uh, holistic deal that would include Ukraine and uh, funding for uh, more border personnel to serve as secretaries uh, that uh, the Democrats are pushing? Yeah, I think we ought to deal with each case as it comes. And unfortunately, none of the elected people like to do that because it makes it too simple and clear for the voters to decide about them. They want, they want oatmeal and we want steak. We need to have Israel supported and they need to take them off out. And I think that any of these college professors – they continue to support their students protesting against Israel for Palestine, but need to have some kind of real rude awakening. Uh, this business that happened in Harvard where these students protested to the president and she cowered to them, just like Biden cowering to those staffers. Get some new staffers. I know. Yeah. You don't uh, question and, the president and you, you lead. You don't even entertain them. I mean, the fact that he asked for their opinion and then listened to it and then groveled saying i'm sorry i'm I disappointed i'm disappointed in myself makes me sick yeah at, at harvard yeah. at harvard this is what the students wanted this is what they demanded of the harvard president claudine gay divest any investments in quote-unquote illegal settlements in palestine uh reinstate a proctor suspended for taking part in a mob that surrounded and harassed a jewish student and a promise from Harvard that pro-Palestinian students and workers engaging in quote-unquote nonviolent protest would face no disciplinary action. That's what Claudine Gay uh, cowered uh, before, as you described. So um, in, in terms of the reckoning for colleges, starting with the Ivy League, but certainly not exclusive to the Ivy League, 
Um, there's things Congress can do, isn't there? Sure. I, well, if it were up to me, I'd cut their money off. Of course, if it were up to me, I'd cut their money off for a lot of other things. Yeah, right. I mean, well, higher education is nothing but a creature of the federal government. Well, oh, so so cut their money off, uh, meaning research grants, meaning tax endowments. What what should Republicans should be proposing? Yeah, I would just get out of the education funding business entirely. I mean, and, they obviously are deranged and, and off the center by the kind of things they've been advocating ever since this free speech stuff came up about four years ago, when the only two people in the country that were rational about it were Mitch Daniels and that guy at the University of Chicago. Mm-hmm. And what about at the K through 12 level? I mean, I know it's a it's a drop in the bucket uh, because it's mostly state and local funding. But, uh, you know, school districts like Chicago, like Chicago public schools, get about 10 percent of their funding from the feds. What about the same thing there? I mean, we see similar behavior. There was a high school in Queens where a, a Jewish uh, uh, a teacher, public health teacher, I think, um, was surrounded, accosted <laughs> by the, her students, the students at this high school in Queens, because she dared to go protest uh, a rally on behalf of Israel saying, I stand with it, holding up a sign saying, I stand with Israel. They found it on social media, and it was a mob action at the high school. Uh, perhaps there should be pressure at the state and local level, too, for the, in the same direction as with the colleges. Yeah, there sure should. I mean, maybe this is a new facet of the parental role in children's education that got people like Glenn Youngkin and Ron DeSantis started that has proven to take, take root all around the country where people want to make sure they know what their kids are reading, what they're being taught, if they're not being brainwashed. And certainly this, this recent facet of, of whether you uh, allow Palestinians to walk all over Jewish teachers and things uh, and, and, and eliminate the free speech of the, of the Jewish teachers is ridiculous. Hey, I wanted to ask you real quick about the American hostages, because I remember when we had the American hostages in Iran, I re- we, we knew their names. We people were tying yellow ribbons around trees, you know. It's been 52, now 53 days, and President Biden even said over the weekend that he didn't know uh, what what American hostages will be released by Hamas or whether they're even alive. And then he went shopping, Christmas shopping. So where is there's no sense well, of know, urgency. Yeah. Is there something going on that we don't know? No, I don't think there's anything going on. That's the problem. We're taking our orders from Hamas. They're deciding who to send out them negotiating with the Israelis. And and I think that they're, the Israelis would just soon get all Israelis out first. So we may be at counter purposes with them. Hamas is going to try to send a representative sample that makes them look as good as possible. It's not rocket science. It's just basically the, the politics of war. And, um, I mean, the other aspect of this, too, is what we're doing vis-a-vis Iran, or more to the point, not doing, uh, particularly as it pertains to enforcing sanctions that would uh, cut off some of their oil money. You know, uh, just as ridiculous as this uh, Palestinian support thing and, and the, the, the cloud of, of, of a, how to deal with Hamas and PA and Hezbollah and all that, it used to be quite clear. How about this whole Iranian thing that started with Obama and has been revived by Biden? I mean, I don't understand why we want to continue to help people who hate us. Want to take us out? It is confusing. Um, before we let you go, I, I, since you were uh, ambassador to the Vatican, I wanted to uh, ask you about Pope Francis um, because he's been in the news for uh, taking out Bishop Strickland in Texas. Now he's in the news for allegedly targeting uh, the former head of the Arch in St. Louis, uh, Cardinal Burke, uh, for hosting. Um, uh, the uh, gender confused uh, for lunch. Um, what, what's your assessment of Pope Francis' leadership of the church? Well, let's put it this way. I'm glad I was ambassador when Benedict was the pope. Strong friend of the United States, strong focus on the liturgy of the church, and not really so focused on these social programs that this, this pope has been focused on. This guy comes from South America, the home of liberation theology, mm-hmm. part of whose effort is to get more money out of the developed world and make the developed world feel like they need to do more for these basically corrupt countries that don't take care of their people. 
Yeah, that'll be interesting. I, I don't think the uh, newly minted president of Argentina is a big fan either. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of welcome home he gets from uh, uh, from President uh, Millet. But uh, I digress. Yeah. Francis, Ro- Francis Rooney, former congressman for, for from southwest Florida, former U.S. ambassador to the Holy See, author of the book The Global Vatican. Francis Rooney, thanks for joining us again. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Hear about the big stories of the day, then talk about them right here on Chicago's Morning Answer on AM 560. The Answer. I love giving jewelry as a gift. Hi, it's Mike Gallagher. I want to tell you that Roland's Jewelers is the perfect place for that magical holiday gift for someone you love. I'm always amazed by their five-star Google reviews. I love that they're family-owned. Hey, getting engaged? Well, Roland's Jewelers has a large selection of both mined and lab-grown diamonds at great prices. Choose from beautifully crafted engagement rings from designer Simon G. Or Italian designer Roberto Coyne, offering stunning diamond pendants and earrings. How about a Tag Heuer watch with cutting-edge technology? Listen, I've been a customer of Roland's Jewelers for a long time. You should, too. They're so impressive. Their staff is expertly trained. I encourage you to visit Roland's Jewelers 